Hey, what's going on? This is Jason Mike, Mr. Athletic Over Everything, and J Mike Fitness on Instagram and jmikefitness.com. Today, I wanted to talk about a kind of controversial topic, and it's mostly coming from people who want to improve their bench press. And I see a lot of young lifters get steered in the wrong direction when it comes to this particular topic. And this one in particular starts with the elbow sleeve or the wrist wrap. Um, I see a lot of times um, young lifters see a lot of their, their favorite um, lifters on Instagram or, or Facebook or even fa um, YouTube and they see these guys put up crushing monstrous bench presses. And a lot of times what they don't know or realize is that there are a lot of little tricks that are going on to kind of deceive you. And some of the guys will actually say what they're doing or what they think in their head they're doing. But I just wanted to clear this up a little bit because when I first started out, I was benching around 500 pounds. And I used to see guys who would bench press 512, 517, 519, whatever in competition. But yet they're doing 500 pounds for three reps. And when you do the math on that, that's like a 540 pound bench presser, or 550 pound bench presser. So I wanted to, some answers. So I went around and I asked a couple of guys and even got into some arguments with a couple of guys over it. Um, like, why do you wear the wrist wraps? Why do you wear the, um, not so much the wrist wraps, but why do you wear the elbow sleeves? And the number one answer for most of them is to keep my elbows warm. So through all this time, you know, I was just starting out. Um, I didn't really want to invest a lot of money, but these particular elbow sleeves were very expensive. So I went the first meat prep or whatever, and I didn't mess with them, but I'm constantly seeing people who are bench pressing around what I bench press in competition, but in training, they're doing two and three extra reps that I just couldn't do. So I was like, you know what? I think it's something with those elbow sleeves, so I'm going to get me a pair. So I went out and purchased a pair of SBD um, elbow sleeves. Now, these are pretty expensive. Uh, I think they're close to $65, $70 for them. And let me tell you, they work very, very well. Now, I'm no longer sponsored by the company that provided these to me, but I will say that I actually stopped using them because they work too well. Now, that's something different to hear from an athlete or from a lifter say something like that but what I noticed is, is that it threw my bench off like you have no idea where you actually are in terms of benching because these things can give you anywhere between 10 to 20 pounds on your bench press so when you see guys on, on YouTube you know pulling off these monstrous bench presses most times you're gonna see them in a pair of SPD knee sleeves I mean or that's the new thing they do they throw on these knee sleeves I mean, mostly, I think the bigger reason why people, you see more people doing it now is because most people already have the knee sleeve. So if they use it on their arms as well, they don't have to buy a second set. But I think that we need to get the understanding of why you're using them. Are you using them to keep your elbows warm? Probably not. If you're using them to keep your elbows warm, you could probably just go ahead and invest in a bottle of uh, Tiger Bomb if you're using it to keep your elbows warm. But in all actuality, in all honesty, that's not what we're doing. They're just trying to get clout for Instagram and YouTube. So um, I wish more lifters would be a little more honest about this because um, I'm a very literal person. So if you tell me you did X, Y, and Z to get to where you were, I'm going to follow X, Y, and Z to try to get to where you are. And that's probably not the best way to do things, but that's how I've always done things in my life. If someone's laid out a blueprint, I'll try to follow it to the best of my abilities. So that's why me being a natural lifter, being a master lifter, it's a little bit difficult because a lot of times people don't believe my journey. It didn't involve steroids. It didn't involve a coach. It didn't involve a bunch of people around me. It was just me. So I did look to a lot of different lifters. Um, some I even reached out for advice and some I just watched their videos. And I was able to come up with some of my own concepts on my own that allowed me to become the 628 pound venture that I am today. Now, um, I do believe there are tools and there are ways to use these devices 
to train with. Um, I think that once you get to the point where you know where your bench is, you can use a pair of elbow sleeves. But when you start getting to the point where you're wearing a pair of elbow sleeves with a compression cuff underneath it, that's a little OD. At that point, you might as well wear something like a, a shirt or a slingshot. Um, or one of these kind of devices if you're going to have that much support. But in most cases, guys are just trying to hide the fact that they're actually wearing all that stuff. So you don't really see it in the videos, but just believe that when you watch some of the bench presses, if you look at the bottom of their of the press, you'll see like a, a, a reaction that's unnatural at the bottom of the lift. That's because all that material is, is um, that energy is going straight up once you release it. It's like a rubber band effect. That pull and then that release gives it that, that unnatural look. It looks like almost like they're benching their shirt. And that's really what they're doing. Um, I think that if you're truly just trying to get your elbows warm or something of that nature, you can go a couple of routes. You can go uh, 2XU makes an arm sleeve that you can wear to keep your elbows warm as well as McDavid. They make a compression um, sleeve that's really compression. It's not going to give you anything. It's just going to keep your elbows warm if that's what you're actually trying to do. Um, like I said, if you're trying to use these compression cuffs, like instead of using a slingshot, you're just like, well, I'll just put on my compression cuffs in order to get my extra overload weight in. There's nothing wrong with your training, but I just think that it's pretty hard to um, try to figure out where you are on the bench press using these type of devices and aids. So be very careful with them. If you're, a if you're to the point where your bench press is that dialed in, go ahead and do it. But there are very few people who are that dialed in on their bench press that could actually afford to use aids like this and not have it affect their bench press. Now, um, the one that I see, and I, I've seen it pretty recent, I would stay away from it. Um, it's the one where you see guys using the actual wrist wrap around the bicep and forearm area. And it's just too much. I mean, it's the only reason you can even justify it is purely for likes and views on IG. There's no other reason for it, especially when these guys have access so all the other things that they could use. Um, but this does give you 20 to 30, 40 pounds extra on your bench press, and that's why the guys use it. But if you're a young lifter, stay away from it. I tend to try to stick with weight that I can do. Um, I don't do accessory work. That's me personally, but my clients, I do prescribe that in their training protocols. But what I did first was master the bench press. I am very good on the flat bench press because that's what I compete with. I compete on flat bench. I don't do incline, I don't do decline. So I went the route of perfecting what I was doing and I've gotten pretty far with it. So I think that some of you guys need to not worry about some of these arbitrary little things sometimes and just concentrate on what you're trying to do. Get as much time with that heavy weight that you're trying to lift and learn how to lift it. Now, um, I don't use, I train by myself, so one of the tools that could be very helpful helpful to a, a lifter would be something like this, the rep boards. Um, I like this because you don't need anyone else to help you with it. You can do it two ways. You can either have it hooked to you or you can actually um, stick it to the bar. And that will allow you to get the same advantage of using a board system. Um, now, if I were to use something now, pretty much over overload, it will probably be something on the board tip due to the fact that uh, last training cycle, I was trying to uh, implement the, the uh, Titan Ram um, into my training protocol and it snapped on me. I was training with like 270 pounds and it snapped. And on that particular day, I was scheduled to go up to 700 pounds with it. And I'm glad that it actually did pop at 275 pounds or 70 pounds so that I was able to live and see another day because if that thing would have snapped on me with that kind of weight, I could have been injured beyond repair. So I'm more or less in the camp of sticking with weight that you can handle. Um, and that's also a huge key or tip when you're benching. You shouldn't be nervous about a weight that you're attempting. And if you are, you shouldn't lift it.
Um, and that's what I found out there recently that when I've mastered and controlled a particular number or a weight, I have no issues with it. But it's the weights that I'm not so confident in. Those are the ones that I actually have problems with and they look rushed. They look like I'm scared. They look like I'm hesitant, things of that nature. So I try to eliminate that as much as possible. Now, I've also stated in another video, which may be linked in this particular video as well, is that a good wrist wrap can add 20 pounds to your bench press. And I see most people do not take advantage of this particular um, um, tip, um, that if these things are wrapped properly, you can generate an extra 20 pounds. Now, is this cheating? No. If they allow you to do this on a platform, I see no problem with training with it. So that's why I don't consider these training aids. I consider these training necessities. It's a big difference. So if you guys do want to add more weight to your bench press, check out the weight that should check out the video that should be linked to this particular video, or you can find it in my um, library of videos on how to wrist wrap uh, wrap your wrist for a proper bench press. Um, and pretty much that's it. I just think that for the most part, um, Instagram has changed the way a lot of athletes change. I mean, train, and it also has it's also changed how we look at lifts. Like if you see this right here, this is 600 pounds, kilo weights. But if I would have had, let's say, five plates, I mean six plates on each side, and those six plates were 45 pounds, which is only 585 pounds. I would get way more views on my videos. But since I don't train like that, I train how I actually play. I use competition bar, competition plate, competition rack. But what makes that but it actually makes my videos less appealing than someone who's just banging around weights in a commercial gym. So I've chosen personally to put that aside so I can get familiar with what I use on the platform. So I hope this video was informative to those who found it informative. Um, I will be releasing a whole bunch more videos. The next video I will release will be with the homemade Theragun gun that I made. I'll be going step by step and how I actually make the performance tips that I use on it as well as give you guys a little insight on some other options that you can use um, with that. But once again, this is J Mike, Mr. Athletic Over Everything on Instagram. Later.